Time is money. This expression means that there is a direct relationship between time and money. But I would look at it differently. Not time is money, but money is a function of time. However, we don't spend all our time getting money. This is what the function looks like in the first approximation. M is for money. T is the time taken to receive this amount of money. Let's try to understand what kind of function is this F, which maps time to money. Here we have a laborer who receives the minimum wage. Let's say $10 per hour. He works 9 hours a day. That is, he earns $90 per day. And here is a programmer who receives, let's say, $50 per hour. He also works 9 hours a day. That is, he earns $450 per day. What is the difference between them? Why can a programmer sell his time for more than a laborer? This is the usual law of supply and demand. Where demand meets supply, there is the market price of a certain person's time. For programmers, they are found at a higher price than for laborers. For some professions, they intersect at an even higher price. Because the supply can't meet the demand for them. And why are there few of them? Because these professions require certain knowledge and skills. And many people find it difficult or uninteresting to study. A small digression about time and money. We must count time as gross and money as net. It is necessary to count all the time spent on work, and not just officially paid. For example, a laborer and a programmer spend one hour to get to and from work. Then the laborer spends 10 hours a day earning $90, that's $9 per hour, not $10. And a programmer spends 10 hours a day earning $450, that's $45 per hour, not $50. And you need to count the money, only those that you receive in your hands or in a bank account. Of course, you can boast that you have a salary of $100,000 a month. But in fact, you can only receive $60,000 after all taxes are deducted. This is the real money for which you sell your time. So we got the first parameter for our function, the knowledge and skills that those who buy our time need. S stands for knowledge and skills. This is all the knowledge and skills you need to sell your time for the highest possible price. Including the ability to bargain for your salary. As an entrepreneur, you too spend your time to make money. There is also a direct dependence on knowledge and skills. But there are three features, more freedom in time management, delegation and risk. Freedom means more efficient use of time with the right knowledge. This can be included in the S factor. You need to be able to use your time effectively. For an employee, this is also relevant, although to a lesser extent. Delegating involves buying cheaper time from other people. This is a well-known rule of the market, buy cheap, sell expensive. Just resold someone else's time. Surplus value, as Karl Marx said. Delegation also includes investing in automation. Machines do the work for you or increase efficiency. An employee can also pay another employee to do some part of the work for him. And he does his own thing and gets the difference between the payments. He can also automate his work and not inform the employer about it. And he may even ask for a supplement for more efficient work. Now we have, D is delegation. It can be assumed that D greater than equals 1, because in the case when D less than 1 we can throw off on knowledge and risk. You need to be able to hire good people and buy good equipment, although there is some risk involved. Risk is something difficult to predict. The ability to manage risk is part of the S parameter. The risk value ranges from a very small number to a very large number. This parameter can send a person into a deep debt hole, or it can make a billionaire. An employee is also at risk if he has personal responsibility for his work or dangerous work, such as a miner or a soldier. Our formula now looks like this. R is risk. It remains to add depreciation. Man is a fragile creature. Work can hurt, stress, harmful production. All this shortens the life of the worker. It also increases medical costs. Now our formula. A is depreciation, which is almost always less than 1. Also, don't forget that work can be fun. This is especially true for creative professions. For example, science, art and sports are areas where people often get great pleasure from their work. Henry Ford once said that the best job is a high-paying hobby. I don't know how to add this to our formula. Maybe this is part of the S parameter, because if a person loves his job, he is constantly improving and therefore increasing S, thereby increasing the amount of money. Now let's move on to passive income. Passive income is income that does not depend on daily activities. These include interest on deposits, dividends, lease payments. 
This also includes various things, the creation of which may have taken a lot of time, but after creation they bring passive income, which no longer depends on time. Patents for inventions, applications for mobile phones, books, music, videos on YouTube. This income also depends on the same coefficients S, D and R that is knowledge, delegation and risk. Any instantaneous income, such as gifts, inheritance and lottery winnings, are not included in our formula, since they do not depend on time. We have almost the final formula. Function F contains all unaccounted parameters. Anyone can have multiple cash flows. For example, having several jobs, freelancing on weekends and some kind of savings account. Then our final formula will look like this. And this is what efficiency looks like. The more E, the better. That is, the more expensive you sell your priceless time. <music>